Welcome back to Gear and Guitars with Mel. As usual, I am Mel. A little different setting, but we'll get into that some other time. So, the 57. So I want you to take a good look. Definitely an Epiphone. <laughs> okay, you like that aging there? That's not too bad, right? So, this was an Epiphone Les Paul Classic Warm Gold. Um, as I'm sure you can tell, this is not the same gold that Epiphone uses because, well, I did a thing. So I decided, looking at this guitar, I was like, man, it really looks like a 57. Like, well, now it really does. But originally, I'll throw some picks up. It looked good, you know? It was the OG, straight up, you know, trying to look like a 57, but brand spanky with that worn finish. And I was like, man, this is really good. I like that this finish is so light on here. I kind of wish it was Relic. kind of mad. So, uh, for those of you that are curious, no, this is not paint. None of this in here. Uh, I actually did on here before I put the uh, scratch plate back on. What that is, what I did was I ordered from Stumac the vintage gold. Okay, and I got the vintage gold, but what I did was mix with it. Um, I mixed it up with some bronze and some copper dust. Uh, a, a fair amount, which you know, you can definitely still see in the finish. It's just, uh, oh, look at all that checking. Um, you can see it in the finish, but the whole point of it was so that I could then get some ammonia and some salts and oxidize the spots that I wanted to uh, age. So what I did was I mixed all that dust in with the uh, Stu Mac. I sprayed her all down. Okay, and then I hit it with some nitro, uh, a couple coats of nitro, just for the start. I let that solidify pretty good. And then I started scraping. <laughs> It's a relic. People get really weird about relics. I understand that, but I don't care. It's mine, so I can do what I want. Uh, feel free to bash me in the comments on destroying a perfectly good guitar because I didn't, but uh, it's mine. <laughs> um, so yeah, I scraped it down. Um, we hit it with some picks, you know, nice and hard and everything. Like It was only a couple of coats of nitro. So it wasn't, and very light coats at that. So it wasn't very hard to uh, just really, really dig into it. Um, and what I did was I played, okay? And I decided to hit every spot where your hand would hit. These are proper wear spots for something that would be a 57. Uh, see, we got the gold 
chipping down and oxidizing here. Um, we got the maple cap showing in each spot. Each spot has the, uh, the cap showing through. Um, I use salt and vinegar to oxidize all the nickel hardware. Um, that's why we got that nice patina going. Uh, it was not easy. I had to do it again and again to get what looked like real patina. Um, I aged, there you go, aged those nice little knobs there. Uh, the way I did that was also with the uh, salt and, oh man, those look really good. Also with the salt, um, I did that and, you know, I let them soak for a little bit. And, you know, I scuffed them up a bit on, if I remember correctly, the grip tape on a skateboard. <laughs> um, I went with all the hardware. We made sure we got that all done up. So everything's looking right. I've seen some really, really deep road-worn 57s. And uh, that's what I was trying to do. Uh, I didn't do much to the back. It is all coated. Uh, there's, got, there's some wormholes there. I don't know if I can get the right, there you go. You know, it's got some buckle rash and stuff. I didn't go ham on the back because the back has this, this veneer here that, though it does look good and play in the light, it's still a veneer. So I was like, you know what, we'll just give it some buckle rash in the, uh, in the nitro. And, you know, if I decide one day to go ahead and uh, really, really do the back, it was a showpiece, you know what I mean? I was curious as to whether I could realistically age a Les Paul. And I mean, you know, I'm not uh, Tom Murphy or anything close, but I, I didn't do a terrible job. It's like tooting my own horn here. <laughs> or playing my own guitar. <laughs> this is I put it up in a couple of groups a couple of guitar groups and aside from the relic groups man, people lost their mind <laughs> some of them groups man people got mad how dare you destroy a perfectly good guitar you bought it just it's like listen bro first of all i have a youtube channel i haven't been doing a lot with it lately because life has been kicking me in the butt that being said i got a fair amount of gear and i get a fair amount of gear i think i can do what i want even if i didn't i just i've never understood getting so upset at what somebody else does with their gear. And then people are like, oh, that's faking it. You're faking it. It's poser. It's like, bro, listen, I got a lot of guitars. I don't tour anymore. I play gigs, but I don't tour anymore. I'm not on the road. I'm not gonna get a guitar that looks like this unless I bought it this way or made it this way. And yeah, I dig the vibe. And I'm not gonna lie, I did it on a worn because it's not the most expensive guitar. Uh, 
heck, the pickups, this whole, this uh, whole lot of humbuckers, the Jimmy Page set from Seymour Duncan, those are literally worth half the price of this guitar, okay? And the thing is, is it, it doesn't make it sound any better, no. But does it make it fun? Yeah, for me. Does it make it cool that I can look over and see what a, would appear to be uh, a completely worn guitar with all of its stories and life? Yeah, I love that because I can't put those kind of miles on a guitar, man. That's not even if even if I was touring, I just I'm not old enough, right? I mean, come on. I wanted a '57, okay, and nobody. Like, well, not nobody, but people don't have anything to say when you go and you get the Murphy Labs and you pay six grand because you wanted a 57 that looked the absolute shit, right? Well, I don't have that kind of money. You know what I mean? If I did, I wouldn't spend it on a guitar. But I will take one that I already own that didn't cost very much and make it look way cooler. This is way, look at that. Come on. It's just way cooler than it was originally sorry and here's the thing man if epiphone offered something like this i'd probably go buy it you know what i mean because i dig that i have a i have another relic guitar that i'm going to be showing you guys pretty soon you've seen you've sort of seen it it's it's different now but yeah that's the video i mean i'm not gonna go ham on the tones because you guys have heard this guitar plenty of times on this channel okay but i just wanted to show you know i'm an artist i like making art in all different forms i write i paint i sketch i write music obviously i do a lot of stuff but this was the first time where i was like hey man i want to see if i can do some quality aging and this oh this checking oh it's so good like it's so good uh i did the checking really really cheap I, uh, obviously I refinished it in nitro and then I went and stuff that you use to clean electronics and stuff like that. So I would take it and I heated it up pretty good with, uh, with a hairdryer. And then I took the, uh, oh man, that looks incredible. I took the hairdryer off and then I put it. Look at that checking right there. Uh, and then I put the uh, the cold spray to it. And I did this again and again and again. Until I got the whole thing checking in a surprisingly almost uniform situation. You know? Um, and I'll put some stills up of, you know, some of the spots that I'm proud of. But, uh, hey man. I want your opinion. I'm super curious about what you guys think. Uh, if you dig it, if you think it's cool, subscribe. Uh, if you don't, you can dislike it and you can leave a comment and I will absolutely reply to you. We can talk about it, but uh, yeah, that's it. So again, and thanks for your patience. It's been a long time, guys. Thanks for checking out Gearing Guitars with Mel. <laughs> I'm gonna try and get some, some more content for you guys pretty soon. I got some hollow bodies I wanna show you. I got a few things I want to show you, so. Uh, and just so you know, um, I was running this through my Fender Deluxe Reverb Tone Master, and all I was using was my Uniclon from Stonegate, uh, Stonegate FX, which is my favorite Klon clone ever. <laughs> but till next time, and hopefully not so long, until next time.